My Hero Academia one of my favorite anime nowadays. I recently watched all the episodes and was so inspired to recreate it in 3D. And let's just see how I did it. Of course, it all starts with references. I knew exactly what I needed, so I didn't have to search for long. I'll be using the scene where Deku unleashed his power for the first time and just smashed the robot's face. The animation is fairly simple. I spent literally a couple of days on it, and here's how I did it. I divided the process into three stages. First, previous. Create a camera and shake animation at once to better convey dynamic and speed and use background footage to enhance the feeling of the scene. For the previous, it's more than enough. Move on to the second part, which is blocking. At this stage, we create the foundation of the scene, setting the character to main, key poses and refining timings. Three poses for the start will be enough. Very first one, anticipation for the punch and punch itself. In blocking part, try to avoid adding too many details and focus on the main stuff. Otherwise, it will be hard to make some changes later. I didn't move the character in space at all and was more focused on camera animation. All zooming in and out were done through the camera. This way, I feel much more in control of the scene because I work with only one controller. Additionally, I actively use the focal length attribute to create the effect of immersion and space distortion, the technique that often used in anime. Now on to the final stage, polishing. Let's push poses and transitions between them. Adjust facial expressions and add hair animation. Since there were not enough controller for the hair, I used free script called Cloth Deformer. It's a very simple and powerful tool for cloth and hair simulation. Select the vertex of the geometry and add a soft selection by pressing B on a keyboard and B plus dragging middle mouse button to specify the area affected by the deformer. Then press generate, which will create an additional controller with wind effect. Adjust the speed and amplitude and repeat this process for the remaining part of the hair. Looks way more dynamic. I wasn't satisfied with how the face looked, but it was difficult to fix it through the rig features. Bruh. So I used a script that allowed me to create kind of blend shapes, like a corrective layer of geometry. For this I utilized an Polish script. The link will be below. Export the animation to LMB cache and then correct the pose using sculpting tools. Then attach the corrected geometry to the animation file and the first scene is fully ready. Let's see the difference between early blocking and final animation. The second scene was much easier. Literally two poses and camera shake. Since there will be a lot of visual effects in the scene, I quickly created blocking for the VFX via primitive objects as an additional reference. Now I have a better feeling of timing and the position for future effects. To show the punch effect, I made a dent at robot through blend shape. Just copy the basic geometry, deform it using sculpting tools and click create blend shape. Now the main geometry has an attribute of this dent, which can be turned on at the right moment. The second scene and whole animation is ready. And we can jump to Unreal to cook some visual effects. But before that, let's export all animations. Select the geometry, click Export Selection to Alembic and save it. Click Import in Unreal, select Geocache as an import type and... Let's see what's the deal. OK, we have an appropriate topology. Go to Mesh tab, make sure you are in modeling mode and click Triangulate. The error is gone. Don't forget to smooth topology before export. Let's quickly transfer camera. Go to File, Export Selection, choose FBX, check Bake option and click Export. Click Import on Camera Actor and use these settings. Change the aspect ratio and this is it. Drop the Alembic and press Track, Geometry Cache. 
let's assign materials. Just drag the textures on a character and this will automatically create master material. As you can see, the cache file has five material inputs for the different parts of the character. But here's the issue, I need one more for hair. Let's go back to Maya, select hair geometry, switch to edit mode, select all faces and assign new material. Export again. But now don't forget to check face and color sets options. Re-import. Now I have additional input. Let's set up eyes material to be able to scale them as an animation. Drop the texture, connect to base color, create scale UV by center node, constant node and connect to texture scale. That's pretty much it for the scaling. Now just turn constant node to parameter and create material instance from master material. Let's create glow for the eyes. I made an alpha mask in Photoshop to highlight the part that will glow. Drag the alpha, create a color, constant, to multiplies and connect to emissive color. Also connect scale by center node to alpha. All done. The same technique was applied to lightning effect on Deku's hand. I drew alpha mask in Substance Painter and set up the material as for his eyes. Now let me show you how I created the lightning ball effect. Create a material, change blend mode to translucent and shading model to unlit. Create generated band and click start previewing node. Right click on white, promote the parameter and change the value to 0.007 to make the line thinner. Also promote the parameter direction switch and click default value option. Next create noise and panner nodes. For panner let's create constant 2 vector and set values for 3 and 0.3. Connect them all with append and constant nodes to input coordinates. And set output min and max values in noise node for 0.1 and 0.03. Also create texture coordinates and add nodes and connect it. Last thing, create a color and multiply nodes and connect to emissive color and opacity. Lightning material is ready and now I can use it in Niagara to create the cool energy ball. Let's put the effect to sequencer and animate the position and glowing. Love it! I didn't properly plan what I'll do with background. I just dropped the footage on top of the shot and tried play with blend mode and masking. But it's not the best idea. So I went back to Unreal and divided the shot into three layers. Base color, alpha and lights. Go back to Premiere, put background to the bottom, then base layer render and alpha on top. Use track matte key for base layer. Then put lights layer to the top and change blend mode to screen. The first shot is fully finished. Move on to the second shot. I quickly built environment and basic lighting using assets from marketplace. I try to be close to the reference. For the background I used HDRI map. Let's add camera shake. Create blueprint class, all classes and search for camera shake base. Double click, close and double click it again to get to this panel. Choose Berlin noise. Set duration to zero to make shake infinite and set up amplitude and frequency by your taste. Then click track on camera actor and find the shake blueprint. You can play with blend in and out values to make transitions smoother. Now it's time to visual effects. I divided the process to several stages, just like in animation. At first stage I created base lighting effect just using default lights and animating their intensity. Started from directional light, which is main one in the scene, and making this flash effect. Let's add another flash, but with red color. It's enough for the blocking. Next step is distorted shockwave. Just check this quick tutorial. I literally did the same as in a video. Drop Niagara to the sequencer, press track, lifecycle track to set a lifetime of the effect. We can reuse lightning ball effect from previous shot and animate scale parameters. Let's support lightning on a robot with additional red flashing using point lights. Looking good. Let's make blast effect. Create a material, change it to translucent and unlit. Create texture sample and use noise texture by your taste. Add panner and constant 2 vector nodes. 
and set the value to minus 1. Now texture is moving. Let's create a color like I showed earlier. Create Radial Gradient. Promote the parameter Density and Radius and set them to 3 and 0 0.5. Connect it to Opacity with Multiply node. And the last thing is Texture Coordinate. Set the values to 0 0.3 and 8. Done! Create Material Instance and have fun with all these parameters. And of course you can track all of them in Sequencer and Animate. I reused this effect for air impact behind the robot. Just change the color, speed and scale. Last effect to push the punch moment is Flare. Create Niagara system and add single looping particle. Set sprite size mode to random uniform and 50 to 150 for min and max. Choose Flare material in sprite renderer. Here's the setup for the material. Create spawn rate in emitter update and set it to 20. Create sprite rotation rate in particle update. Click on arrow button and add random rage float. Use values that you like. Last thing to create is scale color. Add float from curve to scale alpha and set the curve from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. Go to particle spawn and change lifetime mode to random and set min and max to 0 0.1 and 0 0.5. Let's change the color. Add make vector from linear color and random range color. Use color you like. Effect is ready, but let's push it more. Duplicate the emitter and change the scale mode to random non-uniform. Also change the rotation. Looks way much better. By the way, if you want to output Niagara parameters to sequencer, use read from new user parameter option. Of course you can animate it too. Most of the scene is ready. But let's make a final touch with wind effect. Go to Maya and create simple plane. Make this shape and increase amount of polygons. Cloud deformer will help us again. Select the vertex, turn on soft selection and press generate. Play with values and export the mesh to Unreal. I will reuse blast material again since it's really flexible. Copy the wind mesh several times, set appropriate values and everything is ready for render. In anime, we often see these high contrasted black and white frames, which called impact frames. At the beginning, I tried to make it from scratch with all my drawing skills, but it was a piece of shit, so I changed my mind and used downloaded images. Nice, we're actually done. Before showing the final result, I would like to thank you guys for all your support. I couldn't even imagine that my first breakdown video can reach these scores. It motivates me a lot to continue and share my experience with you. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you. And here's the final result.